Hey, I'm Tom Hades. Um, I'm here with Computer Music in my studio. Um, I'm gonna show you guys how I build a track from start to finish, really to finish, to mastering as well, or let's say pre-mastering. Uh, maybe you know me from 20 years of being in this uh, techno scene. I've been playing a little bit all around the world. Um, have my own label, Rhythm Converted, which I started to, together with Marco Bailey where actually my whole career started together with. And um, uh, nowadays I'm touring on my own more and more and more. And uh, I'm not planning to stop yet because techno is uh, really part of my life. So most of the time I always start to find some decent kick. Um, so this means that I'm trying to figure out a way that I will um, um, get a direction of my track, uh, which is based on the type of kick. I made a lot of kicks for my own in my presets and uh, synthesis and different ways. And I will start with one, which will probably have the, um, the sound character to words I will working with uh, in, the, in the complete track. Uh, next to this, if you see what I did in here, is actually it's a bounce of a kick which I processed uh, a lot using uh, saturators, compressors, etc. And actually what I always do is I um, send it to a send and return and use this as a kind of sub baseline underneath. That's what you hear. So if you want, I can um, show you how I do this. For example, let's say we take a normal 909 kick. We do a basic pattern. Which is the most simple way of having a kick. And afterwards, what I do is, I just put a lot of effects on a return track. For example, I start with an overdrive. Next to this, I will put in a convolution reverb, which is a reverb from a the max uh, thing from a audio uh, from a live sorry max audio effect it's based on convolutions and i really like this because it has a really nice character in uh, in the different convolutions that you can find in here next to this i make some kind of filter delay Then I will finalize with a simple filter, which gives me the typical techno rumble. And this uh, rumble is uh, very nice because it's not really a character sound. It's not a bass sound that needs to be on a specific tone or whatever, but it will give you the power of the kick underneath. So what I then do is I bounce this. remove the complete thing and then I use something um, which is called uh, Exfer uh, LFO tool it's a sidechain you can use it for a lot of things but I use it for a sidechain effect because for me it's an easier way to put this on instead of you know going through the routing of the sidechaining with compressors and stuff like this so as you can see it will now automatically pump all the time without any problem and then on top of this what I then usually do is I start to put some extra saturation or whatever like the ones you know from uh, sound toys decapitators or stuff like this
most of the time I also use um, let's say typical um, EQs which are emulations of older EQs like the ones from um, UAD um, why because you can add some extra character like uh, the pull tech uh, sounds and because it it can bring up your complete character of the of the bottom or mid or high sounds so let me search those This is my baseline. So eventually, the one that I used in the beginning, which is this, is based on the same principle, but it's like a complete processed one. So let us continue on that one instead of the one that I just created. Then next what I will search is some kind of sequential syncopated melody that will bring me in some kind of direction that I want to go with um, a tone or a character of a sound that is uh, eventually will define the complete uh, tone of the uh, or the chord or whatever of the of the track so there are plenty of ways to do this um, I usually just take a synth whatever it is for example, let's say the I just installed a new um, uh, Arturia collection, so I'm really happy with uh, some new additions they did. For example, you have the Buchla easel; it's really, really nice. Or this one, the DX7, which is a, a cool emulation. So next to this, I um, I use the generators. Um, what I did from the whole, let's say, last ten years is I created my own. Uh, sets of things which I use or reuse. Um, these are uh, MIDI effects, audio effects, uh, patches, um, own made stuff, uh, whatever. Um, why? Because it makes my life much easier and I don't want to uh, be going through plenty of plugins again and again trying to find again the one that I really need so I can have some go-to things which help me out to find quick ideas. Um, for example, one of those things that I use is the sequential, this one. It's a plugin from the guys or company called Hi, H-I. And it's based again on the, on the Max for Life thing. It's a 32 sequencer instead of the typical six, 16 uh, sequencer. Um, for me, it's really easy to, uh, to find some, some quick ideas. But what I always do is I make um, the end in a syncopated way, not like the typical 8 or 16 bar thing, um, a 16 note thing, but really in a way that techno is known for, uh, to find something that is a bit more and now I start to experiment just with sounds starting to put different envelopes um, um, for the people who know the FM synthesis it's actually, you know, oscillators who are influencing other oscillators that it eventually will give you some kind of uh, um, strange or unusual sound. So um, these um, influences, how they are um, 
going from one to another is based on this matrix here. Maybe I can put it a little bit bigger. It's just a default patch that I start from, but it, I'm not really looking for a patch like a typical sound. I just start to experiment with something. With something. It can be an existing patch, it can be anything, but I try to find a way, for example, as you see, just... by turning some knobs and changing some parameters, you can immediately make some something of your own. You know? um, the reason why I really like the Arturia things is uh, because of the edit functionalities, like you can add uh, layers from effects and stuff like this. Like, if you see, how many uh, influences you can do based on the typical FM synthesis on top of this just by using their synths you already get something which is much more unique than for example ever made for me personally What I'm actually looking for at this moment is nothing more than like a sequence which will be running underneath and which will give this typical techno sound uh, that is a driving, non... It doesn't stop, it's a sequence that keeps on going and it will uh, get some kind of, you know, hypnotic feel to a track. Um, before I put on the effect, I will first bounce one without the effects. Why do I do this? Because then I can maybe find the, the notes that are used because I will be using a plugin called Scalar to find the, um, the chords or whatever the scale I'm in because this way it makes my, my life again a little bit easier to find out uh, in which scale I can continue. So what I do then is I just bounce whatever I have. And then I use the function from Ableton, which is a conversion um, based on audio. What it, it will do is it will try to fi find out what is the melody used in this track in audio and convert it to a MIDI track. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's basically it. So, okay, it found a melody, which is fantastic. Uh, it also put it straight away, that's what Ableton does. It does it straight away on a, on a kind of instrument, but I'm not interested in this in instrument. What I will do is I will create another MIDI channel I will put in the MIDI clip, remove the other one, remove the audio because I'm not interested in the audio either. And then on this new MIDI, I will add a plugin called Scalar. Scalar is a really nice plugin for me uh, because it's a, a really complete set of finding MIDI, finding chords, uh, progressions, etc. Chord progressions is not something you typically think about in techno, but in the end it can bring up a character to your uh, track. So how, do, how does this work? You put on a scaler on the MIDI track, you have a, for example a MIDI clip with some, uh, some notes inside, you click on detect, you click on start and you just start the MIDI clip. What it will do is it will play the notes that are inside with an internal thing. And then it will say, okay, based on this note, five out of six, it's probably based on, um, 
on a major scale or a, or a B minor scale. So since it's techno, I, o I tend to use always the minor scales. <laughs> I'm not into the major scales, but uh, that is no problem with using it anyway. So, and this way now I have my own set of progressions that I can use. So next to this, I will create another MIDI, which will be my next sound. And for this one, I just go to anything that can influence me in, in uh, terms of uh, sound. So now I will really search for something that I want to have as a sound. So let's search for some kind of lead sound, maybe. And then I can, using this scale plugin, I literally can drag in a progression. If it works. Okay. And this is one of the scales that can be used based on the sound that we created on the DX. So what I can do then, I can make some kind of sequence out of this. It's just something random that I will try and see what it does. So once I have this, I made my own melody and if, if you can hear it, it's literally it's on the same scale as we created the random one. So that's the cool part of this when using the scaler plugin. You can really build up based on scales, really cool melodies. So basically what you do is you create a random pattern and on this random pattern you have Random notes, of course. Okay, that is a bass note on, on this, what you can choose here, which is C chromatic. But depending on the sound that you use on top of this, for example, I used the DX7, which is actually, um, uh, it's due to the FM av synthesis, it can really be a little bit out of tune, so it can be actually another, another kind of note. So another kind of scale. So what I did is I bounced this, and based on this, I will extract the melody, find out which notes are used, and then with the scale plugin, I will find the root note and the scale which corresponds to this. Or let's say additional scales, because based on this scaler, I just took in the B minor one, I think, or the D minor one, no, the B minor one I, I took. But as you can see, you can use even other ones, which can be used in the same way. Once you select a scale here, you get chord progression, the typical diatonic ones, like the tree ones, or you can have really chord variations, which are much more complex. And based on this, you can have like, um, uh, like the typical hard ones or the ones that you, you will uh, um, do pro, um, transitions with or stuff. But since it's techno again, we're not gonna make it too melodic either. We're not searching for the perfect classical melody. We're searching for something that is still in tune, or let's say in, at least in the same scale, and built on top of this. So once I found the, the scale, I will put it as a, let's say, default midi, midi clip based on the scaler. And then I will search for um, a sound that I tend to go to for, uh, for typical techno. As my choice now is uh, the Arturia Jupiter. Why? Because yeah, Jupiter is a, is a classic, it's a legend. And you, you ha can have the typical um, known techno sounds inside. Um, what I'm looking for now is more a kind of a lead sound because I really want to bring this up 
as the front uh, sound. The one that I just created with the random uh, sequence is more like a background sound. Um, why the Jupiter as well? Because, or let's say why the Arturia Jupiter as well? For the same reasons, you can put in extra layers, which you couldn't do in the really classic one. So. Uh, this is a classical lead, okay, maybe it's a little bit too simple. As you can see, the, the notes as well are too high, as for me. So what I tend to do now is I will make it again more like a, a sequence that will start to cut out more. So what I do is I just lower down the sustain, lower down the release thing, that it gets more cut it out as a sequence. At this moment the sound maybe is still a little bit too soft or too easy to, let's say, for, for stuff like techno it can be a little bit more aggressive. So what you can do then is, if you, if you um, raise the resonance and, and if you start to, to make things a little bit more out of tune or change the, the waveform of the, the oscillators, you can make a, like for example, this is much better. Okay, let's stick to this. For the moment, I'm using the effects from uh, the Arturia synth itself, which you can uh, find in the additional pages here. But it's the, the chorus and the delay. Um, I'm gonna lower down the delay a little bit. Because I'm not really interested in this delay because I want to use something else, what I also created over the years. Um, I tend not to use as much the um, return tracks from, uh, from Ableton, why not? Because once at the end of my, my production stage and kind of pre-mixing stage, I bounce all the stamps and then I go to Studio One. But if you have to bounce the stamps and you send stuff to your return tracks in the stamps, there is no return embedded. So there's something that I'm missing in Ableton when exporting stuff. So that's the reason why I made for myself um, using a, a methods in, uh, in Ableton itself, I made myself a send insert track. What is it? It's actually nothing more than the a chain, an audio effect track with two change, chains. You have a dry chain and you have a plug-in chain. Uh, and in the plugin chain, I already embedded an EQ which cuts out the low. So I don't have the interference immediately with delays going back to my, let's say, the, the place where it's really, really um, uh, important that it's not muddy, it's the base part. So I already cut it out from the beginning. So whatever plugin that I put after this EQ now, I can use it in the same way as a, as a return track but it's really embedded on the track itself. So, for example, if I just put in a, a ping pong delay or something. It's the same effect as a return track, but at least now you have the... When the stem is bounced, everything is inside. And the nice thing about this is, even within this, you can use sidechain. So you're actually sidechaining your own source on your own effect. So what I do is I add a compressor, I put on the sidechain, and then I put on the same track where I, I started to put this sand insert track. So actually the effect now is really sidechained 
based on its own sound. So only the rest is filled with the effect. So next to, on top of this, Techno is known for its, um, um, let's say, tension building atmospheric things which are on, underneath the track all the time and which are coming up and down using LFOs or envelopes or stuff. Um, how do I create um, those things? I tend to use my own methods instead of finding a sample and using transitions. Um, I tend to use uh, an effect track that I also created which is called, uh, in my case, it's an atmospheric sound track. What is it? I just send it to a return track. And whatever sound I want to have additionally sending as kind of atmospheric thing, I can use this. So for example, I just use the J Jupiter now. And it's since it's the same sound who's sending out, I can still stay in the same scale and note and it will not go out of tune. In, uh, if you really have to search for atmospheric tracks and you really need to fine tune them on the same scale, sometimes it's really time consuming and in the end you will, you know, either stop with it or try to find another one. So, And since it's only something that is there to build tension, I only do it like this because then I can bounce it to a separate audio track and I can start looping it and then I can put on top of this kind of envelope generators or elevos or whatever that changes the, the plot or the structure of the sound. So the atmospheric scent rack that I built actually exists of, I will open them up. Basic plugins from, uh, from Ableton. Um, you have a ping pong delay, but on a really narrow band. Why? Because it's, I don't want to have the complete spectrum going up and down. I just want to have some kind of band that is uh, in there. What I usually tend to get in between the one and three um, uh, um, kilohertz. Why? Because that's where the, the tension of a sound can really build. It's not too high, it's not too low, it's just enough. Then I got a, a, band, a panning thing, an auto pan. Um, sometimes I change it a little bit to get a little bit more um, movement inside of the, the sound, but uh, okay. Then we got the resonator plugin from Ableton. I really like this. Um, in the resonator plugin, you have um, a really bunch of nice presets. For example, the Berlin one is really nice. Uh, the Prague one is nice and as well the Rome one. Those are my preferred ones. What are those? Those are actually nothing more than presets based on, um, uh, let's say, chords or chord progressions, uh, which are in balance or out of balance in a kind of way that it can give additional layers, harmonic layers. And then at the end, what I do is I, I tend to put another kind of bandpass thing, but in, in terms of an EQ, EQ8. Um, and all those parameters that I want to change, I just map them to um, this rack. What are the parameters that I want to change? It's the frequency, what, the frequency of, uh, sorry, the feedback of uh, uh, the ping pong delay, then the dry wet of the uh, reson resonator. Sometimes I want to have more or less uh, of the original sound coming through. And then the EQ8, as I said, I use it as a kind of bandpass filter. So I created two frequencies and those frequencies I will be tending to go left and right. So that's basically it. So once I have this, I send it, I send my original track to this return track and then I start to mess around with the frequency bands to find out what is the the thing I want to use as a tension. Okay. And then I bounce this thing to a separate audio file and I just start moving slowly 
some additional parameters that I mapped. So I already get some kind of evolving thing in the bounced audio track. The good thing about techno is you don't really need to stand in uh, uh, typical bars or two bars or four bars. You can really make it syncopated and that's really nice. Because that's what makes a track really interesting. So once I have this, I can remove the return track. I'm not interested anymore. Now I have the bounced audio, which is an evolving, as you can see. You can see it slowly evolving, etc. And that's the good part about this. I can use it now underneath my track with additional layers, like I said before, of um, filtering and LFOs. So once again, I'm going back to my set of patches that I use and I built my own um, high pass, low pass filter patch. What is it? Again, nothing more than uh, two audio uh, auto filters from uh, Ableton where there is one mapped as a uh, high pass as the, the moment I turn it on it will literally turn on why is this good? because otherwise you will all also lose if it's always turned on you will also lose always lose actually uh, a part of your sound so if you map things always try to figure out if you have a zero value that you can put it off as well on the zero value it's very important so what i can do now is i can use this filter now in combination with an lfo this LFO is again um, a uh, Max for Life LFO plugin. You can find it, it's free. Um, and you can map it on a parameter that will then slowly move in the amount that you want. So I will change the frequency to a really low one that it will slowly evolve from low pass to high pass, etc. Okay, a thing I always try to force myself as well in the beginning of a production is not to stay too long with tracks which are not named because in the end you can get lost in so many tracks and you're, not, you're always like soloing things and ah, I don't need this, I have this, etc. So it's not okay. So. Let me rename those. Okay, next, what I tend to go to is now, um, I really wanna go for uh, some kind of um, percussion things. First thing which com comes up in my mind is of course uh, the hi-hats. So let's go for a 909 hi-hat. The ones that are included in, uh, in Ableton, in the suit anyway, is, are actually pretty good. They're handy to use. Um, I just add in some additional things like uh, saturators to give them a, bit of, a little bit more of character. Um, first thing, what I always do, and it's something out of habit, I guess, but I always use the low cut to really cut out the lows, because I don't know why they did it, but it's a sample, it's a sample based on a 909, but there is still so much rumble on this sample. In the back. So, for me it would be much more logical that they already opened up the low cut, but okay, whatever. It is like it is. Um, once I have the the Hyatt which I tend to use which is a 909 closed I will make just a typical 16 pattern and I will train, try to bring some swing on it which I also use within Ableton you have the swing uh, possibilities 
and I tend to go to the swing 55-56% which is enough for me. It's not too much and you can uh, easily change the amount. Um, lowering down the DK, why? Because I want to play a little bit with the DK just on this, that it's slightly changing over time or with, a, with another LFO, which I use. So I mo just mop it to the DK thing. And I do a small amount. will bring movement to my track instead of the typical two linear stuff. Um, the one plugin that I always tend to go through go to go for uh, for um, adding on top of my percussion elements is uh, the isotope trash. Why? Because I really like this um, the, the algorithm of saturation on uh, percussion elements. Um, trash really has a, a unique sound. Um, I made a uh, by just experimenting. I made a saturation um, default preset for myself, which I can use. But it's actually based on a multiband. Uh, I'm gonna lower down this volume a little bit. It's based on a, a multiband thing. So on the lower one, I tend to, for if it's a hi-hat, I'm not using it at all. Just, I lower down the mix, but on the mid and on the high frequencies, there are two different algorithms. The mid, I use the tape saturation that they use. It's based on an old um, um, tape model, uh, emulation, but it's, it adds some grit to the, to the sound in the mid. And on the higher one, I use an amp. You can see it as a, a, a guitar amp, which is like bringing up the transitions a little bit more. Then, since we're in the 909 uh, percussions, let's stay in the 909 and I'm gonna add another one, but it's the open hi-hat now. Uh, again, I'm gonna do the low cut. I'm gonna lower down the DK because I don't want to have it too open either. And then I'm gonna, instead of bringing it to the typical in between the kicks, I'm gonna set it to a point where um, it's again for the uh, for techno in a syncopated way more. So, which is for me much more interesting if I use this in combination with some delay effects or uh, reverb effects. One thing I used to have in the past in hardware but I sold it, stupid me, but I sold it, um, is the Roland emulation for Space Echo. I bought a new one which is a, a guitar plugin, a uh, guitar uh, pedal, sorry. It's okay but it's not the same. But there is a um, uh, there is one that is made from audio thing. It's an emulation based on this. Um, Roland Echo, Space Echo. And I really like the sound of the, of the reverb of, of these kind of things because again, it's based on a kind of tape thing and it gives some additional character to your sounds. So, so you can hear it immediately. It's, it's much nicer as a reverb. Um, 
once I have this, I'm gonna find a way to get some additional lower sounding percussion like toms underneath to give it even more character in the bass because I still only have the uh, I only have the bass from the kick so I really want to have some additional percussion underneath so what I will do is I will go again to the 909 kick but this time I will take the complete kit from Ableton because I can play around then with the with the toms okay what I'm aiming for is actually something that I will use in the same way as I used in the beginning of the kick I will send it to an, a return track with additional stuff on it and this I will use as, a, as the bass line then so I will just Put in some notes, which I can use on top of, uh, or let's say underneath as a bass line. So. I'm just looking for something very easy. Okay, it's much too loud now, but since I'm just, I'm gonna use it as a um, bass for my send to the return and as a bass uh, sound I'm gonna uh, not focus too much on, on the fact that it's not sounding correct in the track and I'm, I'm not looking at the sound now. So again, what I did is, I just put in the percussion, I send it to a, a return track, and on this return track, I just made a, a sequence of uh, plugins that I will be using to accentuate the, the sound of the toms as the purpose to be using it as a bass line. So I'm gonna bounce it again, because it's only for this that I need it. So let's bounce this. Okay, so I just bounced the uh, percussion as a bass line. If you want to listen to it, it's boring. <laughs> but it doesn't matter because, again, it's just the thing which is underneath and will fill up the space in the, in the bass area and will be sidechained on, on top of the kick as well. So, again, I'm only looking to find something that will accentuate the bass now. To really use this in a proper way, um, Melda Productions has a really cool plugin, which is called Ambassador. What is Ambassador? I don't know if I can make it bigger. <laughs> um, Ambassador is nothing more than a, a harmonic generator in the bass area. So you have the typical bass and then you have the sub basses. Um, as you can see, this is your dry sound. I, I created much more bass now, so this is way too loud. 
I tend to use it in a way that it's just underneath my dry signal, that it's an additional layer, but it, it can bring a lot of more character in bass. So on subsystems you, re you really hear this difference. I'm gonna put this a little bit lower because it starts to Okay. Um, of course, now I'm gonna sidechain it again because I added some layers, so I, I wanna have it sidechained that the kick is not interfering, or let's say the bass is not interfering with the kick, etc. So that's enough for me. I'm not sure about this one. Um, the moment you start adding layers like I do now is, as, at least for my way of working, I tend to find a way during my adding of layers that I can still find the gain staging and the balancing in a good way. So what I do is, if I tend to have the impression that something is um, slightly too high or not, or fighting already in frequencies, I try to find a the best way to get it already a little bit balanced out because otherwise I will keep on focusing even without wanting to focus on this and I will lose my my um, my attention for the production stage so for example what I hear now is that bass and kick are not really working together as far as how, how I want to have it so what I will then do is I will use um, Again, the UAD plugins, the pull tech emulations, to find the frequency that is really bothering me. I'm gonna put it on the bass now. And what I can do now is I can dip really high and start moving the ones that might be interfering this is the one so around 60 Hertz and 200 Hertz that I want to have a dip because those are the ones that are interfering with my kick it immediately gives more space now so that's what I want to have and to give even more um, character to the kick I also use a, a plugin called Kickbox. And what is Kickbox? It's very stupid actually, but it's based on the, the things where the character of a kick is really either in or could be um, muddy or something. So what you have is, is three different parameters to set. You can put them off like this. You have the warmth. What is the warmth? That's where the body of your kick is. Typical is 50, 90 or 110 hertz. Don't see it too straight because I put on an equal, uh, sorry, a visualizer to see um, uh, what is going on in the background. And actually, it's not really 50. It's more like a low shell curved belting. Sorry guys, that's it for now, but if you want to see the next part, the second part, you have to get the latest edition of Computer Music.